All right, so I wanted to go a bit deeper inside the metadata aspects of these sounds because we focus a lot on the fact that these metadata are extensive, but how valuable is this and, and for you? And also, how can you use these informations to narrow down your search and find what you want? So just uh, as a, an example, I wanted to, uh, to show you. So f first of all, we try to have like a file name that has a few words so that depending on, on the sound, it has like four or five words along with the serial number. The serial number is very important because that's what makes it unique, really. So it can be called the same name but by having this serial number, that makes sure that all the, the sounds are different. So that prevents the problems of files with programs. And then we have the description. The description has a lot of words in it. Words are like baits for a fisherman. So you will write words in your search and then boom, you find it. Once you find areas of sounds that are interesting for you, like this, let's see. You can start combining words in searches, like let's say like heavy, weight, rattle. So this narrows down the, the, the search so you're able to go and then once you start listening, continue to listen says, oh, this is good here. So I'll add, I'll add the word resonance. So this narrows down. And once you have like a certain uh, number of sounds, you can use other tricks to listen to. So one of the tricks is to sort by source. So if we sort the entire magnets collection by source, we end up having like a certain order in which the raw file here at 192 plays. And then underneath you have the same sound, pitch and process. This is the 1% version. This is 15%. And this is a hundred percent. You want to know what's the difference between this and that? It's pretty much the same sound. But it's been processed, this one. So it's got saturation, it's got distortion, and a little bit of reverb. Not too much reverb, because it's kind of a neutral reverb. And uh, it's... It, it, and for you, because it's not too over-processed, you can actually reprocess these sounds again and add more reverb, more room, more spaces that you want to define. Aside from that, there are other pro proprietary fields in SoundMiner that can be, that like has the microphone information, the recording medium here, and, and, and some other field like user comments or notes or keywords are pretty much replica of the description field because depending on which program you're using, they translate these fields translate into different fields in other programs. So by putting it in multiple fields of SoundMiner, we make sure that you have access to this information later on. One other thing that is interesting is the category field that ProSoundFX has been creating with all their libraries they're releasing. So depending on all the providers, they always have this library structure. So every sound on their library has a folder structure that replicates the category. So if we take a sound and you reveal it in the desktop, you'll see that these sounds go in different folders. So knowing when you get to work with these libraries, you get to know these folders. So you know that if you go into this library, you'll, you'll find folders in which you might find what you think. 
And let's say warps, you have a bit less to, to search and to listen when you're looking at those. So that's another thing. And when you go back to sound minor, if let's say we're in scrapes here, we would go into scrapes here and end up finding all the metal scrapes in this collection. So then you can listen to it. And then find the right one. So I hope this gave you a good idea on how to move around with this collection. Depending on the program you're using, there are going to be some different fields and that. But we try to make sure that most of the information is available for you in order to search for your sound. So hope you liked it and uh, enjoy.